Hello, and welcome to my studio. I'm Tim Packard. Uh, I've put together this little video on the business of being an artist. I'm actually in the process right now of creating an online course on the business of being an artist. Uh, and I'm actually gonna be hosting a webinar coming up in two weeks, which is kind of a little short overview of that course. Uh, so I thought I'd put this little video together to kind of explain a little bit about what I'm gonna be covering there. Now, for most of us, when we start out as an artist, it starts out as a hobby. Uh, we just do it because we enjoy doing it um, and maybe we get a little bit better. Eventually, maybe someone shows an interest in our work uh, and then we think about selling it. And, and then the question becomes, should I leave my art in the realm of a hobby or should I maybe turn it into a business? Well, the first question is, why would you want to turn your art into a business? I mean, there's a few reasons there. I mean, number one is to follow your passion, right? Um, the idea of being able to do what you love uh, every day for a living while earning some money, that's very, very attractive. You might be able to quit a job that you're really not that keen on doing. There's a certain amount of prestige in terms of becoming successful at, at what it is you're passionate about. Um, but there are a number of reasons of why you might want to turn your art into a business. Well, let's look at the difference between the two. When you start art as a hobby, um, it's just all about fun. It's all about enjoyment uh, and fulfillment. You don't really care what anyone thinks about your work. You're just doing it because you love doing it. And you just do it when inspiration strikes, right? You don't have to get up every day and go in your studio and create. And it's all about following your passion, kind of getting into that flow state. But when you start selling your art, um, immediately, as soon as you start putting your art there for sale, you are to some degree in the business of being an artist. And now you have to start treating your art as a business if you want to succeed. So in, in this case, your art actually becomes a product and it's the same as any other product. All of the other same sort of business considerations kind of go into it in determining whether or not your business will be successful. You've got to concern yourself, concern yourself with things like costs and profits and sales and marketing. You also have to deal with the possibility of failure, right? When you're doing it as a hobby, there's no pass or fail. Uh, but when you're doing it as a business, you have to earn enough money to actually survive. Um, and what can often happen is what started out as your passion can turn into a job. Uh, and it can even turn into a job that you don't really like doing. And that actually happened to me at one point. Um, and so we don't want that to happen. And so what we want to be able to do is, is to kind of um, join those th two things together. We still want to maintain our passion for our art, but we also want to create a successful business out of it. Now, truth time here, um, creating a successful business out of your art is extremely, extremely difficult to do. It takes an incredible amount of work over many, many years. And the sad truth is that most who try doing it end up failing. So in a recent survey in the US, almost 75% of full-time artists, these are people who were self-declared full-time artists, earned less than $10,000 a year. Half of those earned less than $5,000 a year and only 13% earned over $20,000 a year. Well, they must be doing something wrong, right? Uh, and the answer is yes. And I've actually spent the last 20 years kind of pondering this, thinking about, well, what is it that separates those artists who go on to have successful careers uh, and those who become the majority of the starving artists making less than $10,000 a year? And then the question becomes, is it possible to earn a decent living as an artist? Um, and the answer from my perspective is not only yeah, but hell yeah, it is if you know what you are doing um, and if you are willing to do the work that is required. And that actually is what my upcoming online course is going to be about. But what are some of the mistakes that I see artists making out there? Well, 
some of it, it's not artist's fault. There's a lot of confusion out there about what it is to be a successful artist and what you should pursue uh, in terms of being successful, but still being true to your art and true to your passion. So I'm sure you've all seen this quote above me here. If you do what you love, you'll never have to work a day in your life. I mean, that sounds wonderful. And in a perfect world, maybe that would be true, but we don't live in a perfect world. We live in the world we live in. Now, I don't know who came up with this saying, but I'm almost certain it wasn't a successful working artist because what this sort of says is if it feels like work, you shouldn't have to do it. And I know many artists or aspiring artists think they should only be doing something if it's what they love. Um, well, here's the actual truth. Here's what I think about that. That if you want to do what you love and you expect the world to give you a decent living for doing that, um, that's like less than a 1% life. Very, very few people get to do what they love and get to earn a very good living doing it. But if you wanna have that, if you want that for your life, I believe you need to be willing to work harder at that than you've ever worked at anything before in your life. And you also, you also need to be willing to do whatever it takes and learn whatever it takes to actually do that. I believe you need three things to have a chance to create a successful career as an artist. You need to have a passion for art. That is the gift. You hear people often talk about, oh, you're so lucky you have this gift or this artist has this gift. They're actually referring to talent. Uh, and talent is not one of the three things here. Talent is just the sum total of all of your skills, your, your conceptual knowledge, your experience, and your creativity over time. Talent is just where you are now, and you can develop that. But passion, that is the gift. You either have it or you don't. And if you don't have the passion for art, I think there's absolutely no way you would be able to put in the hours required to actually get good enough to have a chance of success. Now, you also have to have a willingness and ability to learn. Um, mastering painting is one of the most intellectually challenging things you could ever undertake, as well as mastering all the skills that are required to become a very good painter. And you have to have a work ethic. Um, and you need a very good work ethic. As I look around at the art world and I look at artists that are successful, it, it just, it's like everything else. Those that work the hardest at it get the most success. Um, and I think that's as it should be. Now, one of the biggest problems is most artists don't understand the art world. Uh, and what you need to understand with the art world is it's not one world. Uh, the art world, you can think of it like a number of different little villages, and each one has their own sort of rules that govern what goes on um, in there. And the thing that's most important that where they have different rules is their definition of what is great art. Now, if we look at the image up on the top left, that's called immersion, often referred to as the piss Christ. What it is, it's a photograph of a plastic effigy, effigy of Jesus suspended in a vat of the artist's own urine. This was an award-winning submission to a number of national shows and it got all kinds of recognition. Now in a certain village, this is considered great art. And that village is the village of the publicly funded galleries, a lot of different universities and colleges that teach art programs that are focused heavily on postmodernism. Now, postmodernism, I'm not gonna go into a huge description here, but it's not a movement in art, it's a political ideology. And it basically says there's no such thing as, as merit. Um, there's no thing is morally more good than any other and everything is equal and any sort of determination we make about one thing be being better than another, it's simply a social construct. So within postmodernism, it's like this piece of art is just as valid as Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, as Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. You have things like three blank canvases, which is actually three blank canvases. 
they believe that this is as good as anything Norman Rockwell ever did. Um, and that is over in that kind of that area that deals with postmodernism. Um, now, I don't subscribe to that at all. I think it's actually a ridiculous ideology. Um, and I think it's an ideology for losers and people who want to blame the world for their lack of success. But be that as it may, you don't really need to understand it. You don't even need to argue about it. You just need to say that's not for me because that's not my world. So my world is the world of commercial sales of artwork. And this is where clients actually get out their wallets and get out some money to pay an artist or to pay a gallery for their work. Now that's a very different world than the publicly funded galleries in the world of postmodernism. Um, in this village, great art is determined not by any professor or by a art critic or anything else, Great art is determined by the public. And we can determine if something is great art or not by what it does. So in my village, the village of commercial sales of work to either clients, uh, which are individuals or often businesses where they're actually gonna hang it somewhere and it's going to be seen. Again, we can identify great art by what it does. And what great art does in this village is it stops people in their track, it takes their breath away, it draws them in and engages them. It actually, it, it, it encourages that biblical uh, emotion of coveting. They want to own it, they want to possess it, they want to take it home with them. In this village, this is where people will often assume the artist has some gift. They they can't believe that a mortal such as themselves actually created this piece of art. And they think that there must be some divine inspiration that has kind of just fallen on this person to allow them to create work like this. Now, aside from invoking these reactions, great work in this village also shows great mastery of skill and mastery of conceptual knowledge. The painting pictured here behind me is probably the best example of a piece that I have ever done that did that. Um, so that was a large four by seven oil called Shall We Dance? Now that was one of the first posts that I did on LinkedIn was a picture of me with that painting. And that, that post went viral. It got over 110,000 likes, 11,000 comments. Um, it was actually causing so much action that LinkedIn thought I was using illegal software to generate more response to the post. I had several interactions back and forth with them. And I, I just basically said, like, I was saying thank you to every compliment that I was receiving. And LinkedIn told me that if I kept doing that, they were going to suspend my account. Uh, and they eventually did. They suspended my account. Well, that then became a story that I had this post go viral on LinkedIn uh, because I was saying thank you to people who were telling me how much they loved the piece. They suspended my account. Um, and I ended up on Global's uh, morning television program, the national show with like a viewership of 3000 people. And that's a photo of me um, with the host, one of the hosts of the morning show with the painting. Um, the painting then was, it was the centerpiece of a solo show I was having at Gallery on the Lake. And it was, the piece was $16,000. It sold in the first hour of the show. And in the second hour of the show, we had a call from someone in England who had wanted to buy it. And they ended up commissioning a second similar piece off of me. So, I mean, that really embodies the idea of great art within that village of commercial sales, right? It stopped people in their tracks. Uh, it drew them in. They wanted it. Um, it caused all this attention. Uh, but what's important to note is it's still not great art for everybody. Almost all of the comments I got on LinkedIn were positive, but I still remember this one comment from this gentleman in Britain and his comment was suitable for a biscuit tin box, maybe, but great art, I think not. Um, and, you know, I just laughed like, what are you going to do? But that's that whole idea too, that great art in whatever village he was in obviously isn't great art um, that I consider to be great art. So that's one of the other things that kind of comes into this whole thing of, caring about what the public thinks, you have to kind of like you're pulling from two different directions. You have to, on the one hand, care deeply about what the public as a whole thinks about your work. 
but you can't care at all what any one individual thinks about your work. Um, and it's that kind of push and pull that actually happens in a lot of different aspects of being a professional artist. So yeah, great art in, uh, in our village, we can identify it by what it does. Now, if, if you decide that you want to be an artist or a professional artist to earn your living as an artist, I think we all want the same thing in the end. We want to be able to go into our studio every day and just pursue our passion. We want to love the process that we use to create our work. We want to love the finished product and be proud of what we've created. And we also want a significant amount of the public to love the finished work as well and to love it enough that they'll actually get out their wallets and buy our work. So that's the, the holy grail, the promised land, right? To be able to produce great works of art that stop people in their tracks, takes their breath away, draws them in, makes them want to covet it. Um, and all at the same time, while you're loving the process, you are loving the actual finished art and the public loves the finished art. So that's where we want to get to. That is the promised land, being able to do all those th things, to be able to create art that does all those things. Um, and I'm willing to guess if you're watching this video, you're not there right now, because actually once you get there, it actually becomes very easy to earn a decent living as an artist. Um, now, if we can think of this like a map where the promised land is where we want to get to, Every artist is going to be in a different location right now. So those are kind of represented by the different X's all over the map. So no one can give you a concrete path of these are the steps that you have to take to get there because everybody is starting from a different place. Everybody brings different strengths and weaknesses. So how do we get there? How do we get from where you are now to where you want to be? Well, that's where I come in and that's where my course comes in. So I can't tell you a specific path to get where you want to go, but I can act like a compass. I can actually give you the information that you will then have a compass. You will be able to make your own decisions. You can ask yourself the right questions and come up with the right answers to create your own path to get from where you are now to where you want to be. And this is in fact, one of the most important things. It's like, where do you direct your efforts right now? Because there's one thing that's true. You can, you can direct an incredible amount of effort into the wrong direction at the wrong time and get little or no um, effect from it, little or no gains. And by the same token, you can actually apply just a little bit of effort, but if you're applying it at, in the right direction at the right time, you can get some significant gains and improvements. But ideally, what you want to do is to put an incredible amount of effort into the right thing at the right time. Now, if you do that, then you're into that situation of continual incremental improvement. Uh, and when you do that over time, the potential is limitless. It's almost like the idea of compounding interest in a, in a bank account. It's that little bit of accumulation over time. And at the end, the results can just be huge. Now, I guess one question you have to ask yourself is, do I know what I'm talking about? And that's a very valid question. So I guess there's a couple of things that I can do to sort of suggest to you that, yes, I do know what I'm talking about. I guess you could look at my career, uh, first of all, to see if I know what I'm talking about. So um, at the age of 39, I quit my job as a police officer to pursue my dream of becoming an artist. Now, it was a bit of a struggle at, at the start. It took me about five years to where I could actually get to the point where I was earning $30,000 a year. But once I did that, then my earnings went up rapidly. Um, and within about seven or eight years of leaving, I was earning over $100,000 a year. And then by 2015, I was still into the six figures, but that number no longer started with a one. Um, so I was selling in a number of different galleries across Canada and the U.S., uh, I publish my own G clay prints. Uh, we sell online, we ship stuff around the world. I'm actually living a life that is 
far beyond what I was actually going for. Um, and I'm proof positive that you can earn a very, very good living as an artist. Now, even more importantly, I think, is the, the fact that I mentored a young artist by the name of Brooke Cormier. So Brooke was the daughter of friends of ours, and I'd gotten to know her during her last couple of years of university. She was actually pursuing a degree as a landscape architect. And when she graduated uh, from university, she broke the news to her parents that she didn't want to be a landscape architect. She wanted to be an artist. Uh, and they were not happy with me because I guess kind of rightly so, they thought I was to blame. Brooke was often picking my brain about, about the business of being an artist. And I had actually seen some of her work and had some dealings with her and, and was reasonably impressed um, with her. Now, I have to say, like, she was not gifted, like, oh, my God, this artist is absolutely amazing. She had a pretty good skill set kind of what you would expect of someone who maybe had come out of a, a good um, high school art program or maybe even out of a college or university where they'd stressed kind of the fundamentals and the skills. But what really impressed me with, a, with Brooke was I could see that fire in her belly, that desire, um, that passion to be an artist. Um, and her work ethic had already kind of impressed me um, as well as her business sense and her realization that, you know, to make a living as an artist, it was as much about the business as it was about the art. So when her dad told me that she had made this decision, I said to them, well, you know what, I think, I think you should give her a year. I would like she can afford to waste a year right now. I think she's got a really good chance. Um, but I said, I will mentor her. Um, as long as she is willing to be filmed so that we can record all of our sessions and that it's available for other aspiring artists to see, um, then I'd be willing to mentor her. Now, I had no idea where this was going, but I did firmly believe that she could at least be successful enough that she could get through that year and have her parents' support to continue. Well, what happened was way beyond either of our wildest dreams in that first year. So by following my advice, as we met once a, about once a month and we would, we would talk about what had happened that month. I would give her a bunch of assignments to do, and then she would come back the next month and we would do it over. Well, at the end of her very first year uh, as a full-time artist, she made over $30,000. Um, and then that just kept going up. A couple of years ago, she moved to Vienna. So she's living in Vienna now. She's selling her work around the world. She has over 200,000 Instagram followers. Um, and she's selling all of her work direct to clients. There's no galleries involved. And not only that, so this is four years after I met Brooke and started mentoring her. Her work is actually selling for more than mine now. The same size piece of Brooke's sells for more than mine. So she's been able to do that in four years by following the advice that I gave her. So if, if you want to make a living as an artist um, and you ask yourself, do I know what I'm talking about? Is there maybe a chance that you might find something of value that, help, that can help you live your dream? I'll let you answer that question, but I'd say um, Brooke's success is kind of the proof of the pudding. And just on, on that note, sometimes, uh, sometimes we hear things uh, and we don't really believe them. And we, we kind of, the question is, should we believe them or shouldn't we believe them? So again, that whole idea is that, is it really just about hard work? Or you want to believe that the people that are successful have some gift, they have it. And if you don't have it, you can't succeed. And that was actually what I believed. Well, it was around 1997 that I read an article by Harley Brown. And this is, this is Harley's book here. This wasn't the book that he had this quote in. Um, but what Harley said was, he said, being successful as an artist is not about talent. He said, talent is highly overrated. He said, it's just where you are right now in terms of your skills, abilities, and knowledge. Um, but he said, if you are willing to work hard enough and do the things you need to do, he said he absolutely 100% guaranteed that you would be successful. Now, as I was reading this, as I say, I'd been on the police force about 15 years. I'd given up my dream of becoming an artist, of becoming an artist. And my initial reaction was to heck with you, Char or 
to heck with you, Harley Brown, not Charlie Brown. Um, you're probably one of these gifted people. They all say the same thing, right? They say it's not about some gift. It's all about how hard they worked and how they just added to their skills. Um, and I was almost ready to kind of discount it. And a little voice in my ear said, but what if he's right? What if he's right? What if you actually could still do this? If you applied yourself and treated it as though that success was going to happen if you worked hard enough. Um, and again, I still didn't really believe it at this point, but I thought just in case he's, he's right, I'm going to act the next year as if I believe it. So I'm going to act as if I believe I could actually fulfill my dream just by working hard. And, and what I did then too was really important is I got really honest with myself and I started looking at, well, where are the weaknesses that I have? What are the things that I'm not good at that if I improve them, that would improve my art. And I really started focusing on all those things and anything that I wasn't good at, I just kind of attacked it until it actually became something that was a strength. Well, as I said, I was going to do this for a year, um, way before that first year was over. Um, I understood what the term synchronicity means. And that is when the world gets into lockstep with you, when you are pursuing the thing you should be pursuing. By the end of that year, i had had work uh, accepted in jury shows. I had work winning awards. I had sold a number of paintings and I was convinced that Harley Brown was right. Uh, within three years uh, of me reading that article, I was elected as a member of the Canadian Society of Painters and Watercolor. I was elected a senior signature member of the Canadian Institute of Portrait Artists. I'd had my work exhibited international jury shows. I was basically being kept busy every day on my days off for portrait commissions that I was doing. Um, and by the end of 1999, that's when my wife sat me down and said, we need to talk. Um, about me quitting my job as a police officer and pursuing an art career full time. And that's what I did. So, so thank God that little voice in the back of my head said, what if he's right? And I decided to believe that he was right for a year. So I guess you're at the same point right now. I'm assuming if you're watching this, um, that it is your dream to become a professional artist. I'm sure most of you have probably been trying for a while uh, and it hasn't happened. Uh, and you're starting to think, well, gee, maybe it's not going to happen. Uh, and this guy here, me, I'm trying to sell you on my course. And it's like there's no shortage of snake oil salesmen uh, on the Internet trying to sell you some easy, quick way to kind of achieve your dreams. Um, and you've got to be thinking right now, this just sounds too good to be true. This guy just wants my money. Um, and nothing could be further from the truth. Um, what I really want is for other artists to be able to achieve their dreams the way that I've achieved mine. Um, and so you can go on my YouTube channel. Uh, and you can see I've got hundreds of videos up there that I've put up there all for free, all trying to help artists achieve their dream. I just made the real life realization about a year ago that if I really wanted to have the impact and help artists achieve their dreams, this had to become a this had to become a for-profit enterprise because if I was just doing it out of the goodness of my heart, I would just do good enough. Um, I've spent the last year creating this course that I'm putting together. Um, this is, and this is, we're in the process now of refilming it for the third time because I wasn't happy with it. Um, and I learned something, which is if I'm going to do something for profit, that means I'm going to do the absolute best job I can. If I'm doing something for free, I'm just going to do good enough. And if I want to have the most impact possible, I need to do the best I can and it needs to actually pay for itself. So that's why I'm now in the process of putting a course together um, and putting a webinar together. And that brings me to the final part of this, this video. And that is I am hosting a live webinar on Saturday, November 21st. Uh, 2020, in case you're watching this video um, after the time of the webinar. And it's going to be from noon until 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be presented uh, via Zoom, and it's going to be $89 per person. 
Uh, now you can register via my website at www.timpacker.com. If you go to the homepage, there's a, a little promotion on the front there and a button you can click to take you to the registration. Now this, as I say, this webinar is gonna be kind of a um, very compressed overview of the actual course that I'm putting together. But it's going to be a really good opportunity for both you and for me, um, because it's going to give you a chance to kind of test drive me to see if what I'm saying and my method of teaching is something that you think will actually help you. So for those who actually take the webinar and then decide that they want to take the full in-depth online course, the $89 cost for the webinar, you will get a credit of that towards the course. Um, I think there's maybe some artists who may just get enough um, from the webinar to say, uh, it's okay, I'm good, I know where I wanna go. Or you may just decide I'm not your cup of tea and uh, you wanna find someone else uh, who's gonna tell you how to get where you wanna go. But I am also going to get something out of this. So I'm going to be welcoming feedback from the webinar about, about first of all, whether the things that I'm saying are clear and make sense. We'll be taking questions. Uh, and when we launch the course, I'm actually going to launch the course when we've filmed only about the first four or five modules. Now, there's going to be over 20 videos. Um, and every year there'll be more added. This, is, this will be a lifetime purchase. If you purchase the course, you'll have access to it. Uh, for life and all the additional videos down the road. But as I said, I've already filmed the course twice and then realized I wasn't happy with the presentation. So I'm not going to make that mistake this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to film the first few modules. We are going to make the course live as a beta version that's only going to be available to subscribers of my newsletter. Um, and that is going to be at a drastically reduced price. And then what we will do is we will welcome feedback and we will roll out new modules each week, but we will have the, we will have the ability to take into account the criticism or suggestions that we get from people about how to make the course better. Um, so that I'm hoping actually the course will be available in this beta version um, before Christmas. Uh, and then, as I say, we'll be rolling out with videos every week, probably two or three videos a week, because I've already got all the modules scripted. I've already shot them once before. So now it's just a matter of rescripting them. But as I say, before uh, committing to the, um, the full in-depth course, this webinar is going to give you an opportunity to kind of see whether or not that's something um, you might want to do. And if you do, the, you will get to credit the money towards it. So that's what this video is all about. I, yeah. So that's uh, Saturday, November 21st, 2020 from noon till 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's going to be presented via Zoom. And it's going to be a similar format to this. Um, this is actually... I've finally discovered the format that I feel good presenting in, and it's uh, basically a keynote presentation with my image uh, superimposed over top, uh, and that's how the webinar is going to be presented. So I hope to see you then. Thank you for listening to me. I'm Tim Packer, and I will see you next time.